The Lions are going to win the Super Bowl. Now hear me out. It's 2020 and this is possibly the worst year in the history of Earth. Aside from that asteroid, the plague and some other stuff. And nothing is going according to plan, which means it's the best possible time for the Lions to win a Super Bowl. It's the end of the fucking world, baby. Now I can hear all your laughs from your television screens, your mobile devices, Twitter, wherever you're watching this, but I don't care. Last year in the first eight games, the Lions offense put up insane numbers and it was without a steady running back. Then Stafford got hurt, Jeff Driscoll happened, and we saw how much the NFL absolutely hates the Detroit Lions. This is probably the most talented team the Lions have had since 2014. You see it. That year they finished 11 and five and had the second best total defense in the NFL, surrendering just 300.9 yards per game. They also finished third in points per game defense, giving up just 17.6 points a game while leading the NFL in rushing defense yielding just 69.3 rush yards per game. Stafford threw for 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, and only 12 interceptions. They lost in Dallas for reasons we won't speak on. One thing that's plagued the Lions is their lack of a running game. Since 1998, the Lions have been one of the worst rushing teams in the NFL. In 21 seasons, the Lions have had three running backs rush for 1,000 yards, with only James Stewart doing it twice. That's bad. Also, what happened in 98? Fast forward to 2020, and the Lions have a trio of great running backs who are all capable of putting up big numbers in Daryl Bevel's offense. He also reunited with Adrian Peterson when I seen him score that ball. Now in 2014, the Lions defense was anchored by Indomitian Sioux, and they were good, but this defense isn't that. The Lions defense was terrible last year, ranking 31st in the league in yards against and 26 in points allowed. They couldn't get to the quarterback, they didn't force turnovers, they missed tackles. They couldn't stop any team who ran. The secondary played the most snaps in man coverage last season, which is a good thing, but they gave up 23 touchdowns. That's a bad thing. This is a different group. The defense lost Slay, who was the best player on a bad unit. So in the offseason, the Lions did something that's never been heard of in the history of Detroit football. They went out and drafted well. They grabbed key free agents to boost the secondary, address the run defense, and the pass rush. The Lions had an amazing offseason. You see it. But Patricia has changed the culture here. Free agents actually want to play in Detroit. And this season, he's on the hot seat. He has to win or he's gone. The success of Matt Patricia, Bob Quinn, and the Lions' entire organization rests on the arm and back of quarterback Matthew Stafford. The text to Nate Burleson was no joke. Stafford should have an MVP caliber season. Here, let me show you Stafford's stats after eight games last season. The man is the greatest quarterback in the history of this terrible franchise. And when the possibility of him leaving Motown arose last season, the conversation changed. Now, am I responsible for that? No, but that's not what I'm gonna tell everybody. We know the narrative on Stafford. Stat Padford. He only gets garbage time stats. Win a playoff game. And while all those statements are true, he also has 28 fourth quarter comebacks, over 40,000 yards passing, and is first in almost every category in Detroit Lions history. We always say the Lions made the best running back and best wide receiver retire early, but they're also wasting another talent. The best quarterback the Lions have ever had and the best quarterback in the NFC North. Since 1958, the Lions have one playoff victory and they've only reached the playoffs three times in the 21st century, where they all lost in the wildcard run. The Detroit Lions have only been a true Super Bowl contender once. They reached the NFC Championship game in 1991 and they haven't come the slightest bit close otherwise. And that's been the Lions franchise for as long as I can remember, years of excuses and excuses and excuses. But this team cannot have any excuses. They have to win now. First up is the Bears. I hate the Chicago Bears. There's no team in the NFL I hate more than the Chicago Bears. They won one Super Bowl and that's all they talk about. This rivalry dates back to the 1930s as the Bears and Lions have played at least one time every year since then to make it the longest running rivalry in NFL history. Now Bears fans would have you thinking they've dominated the Lions when the series is about even. But the Bears have won the last four matchups, and the last time the Lions played the Bears on opening weekend, we got the Megatron. Not this time, though. No. The Lions win. The Bears' defense will keep them in the game, but Trubisky has to put up points. We all know that's not happening. 
The Lions go 1-0 on their way to the Super Bowl. You see it!